of 15 Days of Foundation. This is going to be a series where every single day for 15 days I test out a new foundation and do a new first impression to show you guys. The foundations I'm trying out in the next 15 days are ones that are either super requested by you guys, super hyped up on YouTube, or ones that you guys have tweeted me or commented that you want to be a part of the series. I am completely a foundation hoarder. I have an entire drawer dedicated only to foundations. I love testing out new foundations. It's really difficult to find a good coverage pale skin foundation. So if you also have pale skin, I feel you. This struggle is real. I have a whole playlist for pale skin. So I hope this series and my channel help some of you guys who are also going through that. The foundation game is a lot stronger than it was four years ago when I started all of this. There is hope. 15 days of foundation is going to be July 5th to the 20th. I am pre-recording a few of these videos because I'm going to be gone in San Diego during right smack during the middle of this. So, uh, whoa, this was totally just unscrewed. So the first foundation that we're starting out with is the LC Micro Silk Foundation. This is one of those foundations that I've always been super curious about, but I've never gotten around to trying just because it's not available on Sephora, Nordstrom, anything like that. You can get it on Namie's or you can get it on the LC website. Jaclyn Hill mentioned this foundation in a video like a year ago and it blew the fuck up. So I'm excited to see how this works for me. If you're excited about this series, make sure you use the hashtag 15 days foundation on social. Give this video a thumbs up. Throughout this whole series, I'm going to leave my skin type and everything like that in the description box. I'm also going to leave the foundation that I'm trying out that day and the link to previous days in this series. So this foundation retails for $45, so definitely a pricier foundation. It does have a glass bottle and it's one fluid ounce. There are 12 different shades. The lightest shade is porcelain, which I have. And just reading the description on their website, it says it's a lightweight yet buildable HD coverage liquid foundation made for every skin type, leaving the face to feel flawless, smooth, and hydrated. It's long lasting, water resistant, and mild transfer resistant. So basically not transfer resistant. I don't know how you can be mildly transfer resistant, either you transfer or you don't. It's non-comedogenic, vegan, paraben free, gluten free, cruelty free. So like in any of my foundation videos, we're gonna put this bad boy on, wear it throughout the day, do a few check-ins. I typically like to leave my foundation on for at least eight or nine hours to give it a good wear test. So if you want to see what I think of the LC Micro Silk Foundation, you're in the right place, just keep watching. I am pumped. I just whipped out a new Real Technique sponge. Look how freaking big this thing is. I feel like this one's bigger than my old one. It's nothing like a new sponge. I also have the Morphe G36 brush right here that I'm going to try on one side of my face. For all of these videos, we're going to be doing a beauty blender on one side and a brush on the other side. Just so we can see which applies better. So I have combination oily skin with Acme. Loving the rose gold packaging. I am super excited to try this out because this has been majorly hyped up. And it has a glass bottle. Classy AF and it has a pump. So I'm going to use my foundation palette, aka the back of Bath & Body Works candle, pump a little bit on here, and then we're going to apply it to the face. My skin is pretty good right now. This is mostly scarring. There's a couple like active ones, but this is mostly all scarring. So we're going to see how well this covers up. So I'm going to start out with the sponge on the right side of my face, and let's just dip this in. They say it has lightweight buildable coverage. Looks like a light coverage with the sponge. I am going to do a second layer, but first we're going to go in on the other side with this brush. I have a feeling that a brush will apply this better, just the way it feels on my face. I think the sponge soaked up a lot of that, so I'm going in with a couple more pumps. I'm actually going to switch brushes. I'm going to see if we can get a little bit more coverage with my Stigma F82. This brush typically gives you a little bit more coverage. So far, even with the brush, it's looking like pretty light coverage. I think we'll get some more coverage out of this because this is like way too light for my liking. Shade-wise, it looks nice. Okay, I'm going to go in for a second layer on this side. You can pretty much see everything. It like evened out my skin tone, but you can still see redness, freckles, acne, pretty much everything. It is a super thin formula. I'm trying to think what foundation this reminds me of has a nice dewy satin finish and we definitely got a little bit more coverage. This still looks super natural. I personally like my face to look kind of flawless. I like a more uh, full coverage foundation. But for people that just want to even out their skin tone and want their kind of some of their imperfections to still be peeking through and just look a little bit more even, I can see this working for. When you build it up after it's starting to set, it actually gives you a lot more coverage. I've used a ton of foundation so far. 
a little bit of this definitely does not go a long way. I just tried to put some more over my nose and it looks pretty bad. It looks like it just totally brushed away. Yeah, my nose looks totally scaly textured right now. Much better. I feel like I'm having to use way too much product right now. Okay, so I feel like finish wise it looks best to get the coverage that you can out of the brush and then go in with the makeup sponge to make the finish look super flawless and like blended. To get the kind of coverage that I personally like, I just had to apply pretty much three layers of foundation, which I wouldn't do on an everyday basis. But the fact that we have pretty much three layers on my face right now, it looks really nice. Very skin-like. It's kind of like melting into my skin. And whoa, it actually set. Whoa. Okay, this side is like fully set. When it actually sets, it looks like it gets to a lot more of a satin finish versus like a full on dewy finish. This looks pretty satin matte down here. I wanted to try out the Born This Way by Too Faced concealer today. I haven't used this yet. This is a shade Very Fair. So I figured I would show you guys on camera. This has gotten a ton of freaking hype. This is supposed to be comparable to the Naked Skin by Urban Decay concealer, which is like one of my favorite concealers of all time. Okay, it smells like coconut. I don't think I've ever had a scented concealer. The applicator feels super cheap to me. Feels very moisturizing, for sure. Feels a lot less creamy to me than the Urban Decay Naked. My under eyes look super moisturized right now. I don't know if you guys can see that, but they're like dewy. Not as much coverage as Urban Decay Naked. Not sure if I understand the comparison there. I don't think I'm gonna use concealer on the center of my face like I usually do today, just because I've never used this concealer before and I don't want it to alter the foundation. Going in with my Stargazer powder, like always, to set the under eye. I'm just going to take a tiny bit of that powder and put it on my T-zone. Not a whole lot. I don't think I'm going to set the rest of my face. Yeah, the foundation feels totally set, which I like. I like not having to put a powder over top. You could definitely go straight in with your bronzer, which is what I'm about to do. So it is now 11.40. Getting a late start. I was working this morning and then worked out. So we are here. Let's do the rest of my makeup and I will be right back. All right, so it's now 1214 and the foundation, everything blended out really nicely on top. It basically feels like you're putting product on top of powder, which is really nice, set amazing. The color, now that everything's on my face and it's kind of set in, the color looks a tad bit too dark, but nothing horrible. Let's take a close up look. No creasing anywhere yet. It looks pretty good, just looks kind of like Skin, it definitely has more of a matte finish. We are gonna keep checking back throughout the night. Try and keep this on pretty late since we did start this super late. So, so it's now 4.44, so the foundation's been on for about five hours, and it looks good. My nose area looks really good, which is something that I always look for. I typically get major creasing around my nose area with certain foundations. I have a tiny bit of mouth lines right here. Downside, it definitely oxidized. It's hard to tell with this light, but in real life, there's definitely a difference between my face and my neck now. As far as overall wear, it looks really good right now. It looks like all my blush bronzer highlight is still fully on. My forehead looks a little bit more shiny but not oily. It just looks kind of dewy at this point. I'm about to go pick up Rach and we're going to go to Sephora because I've literally called six different Sephoras to try and find the Josie Marin Argan Vibrancy, what is it called? Vibrancy Argan Oil Foundation. Lightest shade, RG5, is sold out online. It's sold out in every single store. And I found one store 45 minutes away that has one of my shades in stock. So I'm going to go pick that up. Dedication. This is what I do for you guys. Update on the concealer. I definitely see some creasing under there. Not loving the way that looks right now. My next check-in will probably be pretty late, so I will be back for the last check-in. So it is now 11... where's the time? It's 11.30 at night. I am ready to take this off. So Rachel and I went to dinner in Ross, and the lighting in Ross... <laughs> woo. Lighting and Ross tells all. So first of all, for being on for 12 hours, I think it looks pretty good. The shade is definitely too dark for me. I think it oxidized quite a bit throughout the day, but also I think it was just a tad dark to start with. I definitely feel like I have new breakouts forming, so I don't know if it's from this foundation, but notice that. I'm a lot more oily, but again, this is after 12 hours of wear. And compared to what a lot of foundations look like after 12 hours on me, this looks pretty good. Overall thoughts, I'm not super in love with this foundation. If I have a super high, thicker consistency foundation that I want to kind of sheer out, I might mix it in, but for $45, it doesn't really seem worth it to me. If you like light coverage foundations that are pretty long lasting, I think it might be worth giving it a shot. I do like that it mattifies, I like that it sets, 
and I like that it was pretty long lasting considering. I don't think it's horrible, but it's definitely not like my favorite thing I've ever tried. So that wraps up day one of 15 days of foundation. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on day two. I'm gonna kind of be switching between high end and drugstores just to switch it up and get a good variety in there. Love you guys, thanks for watching. See you in my next video, bye. See you tomorrow. Thank you.